When the supervillain is dead, walk the streets of Gotham City. Only Jason Todd can keep them all in line. What will happen next? Well, I'll top into the pages of Task Force Z, issue number one, and find out together, shall we? So then, this brand new Matthew Rosenberg series actually spins out of the events of a bunch of the different backup stories that have been going on in Detective Comics the last few months. In case you didn't already know, some of Batman's most famous villains are dead, either because they died during the A-Day terrorist attacks, or they died in completely unrelated events like Man Bat right here, right now. A shadowy government organization snatched up all the zombies and have decided to put them to work, and leading these zombies is none other than Jason to uh, the Red Hood. Jason had been investigating the whole zombie threat by looking into a very prominent Gotham journalist in that Detective Comics book, but he ended up getting himself arrested and eventually shanghaied into serving a mysterious new organization that's pulling the strings on Task Force Z. Red Hood returns to the Chop Shop, his brand new base of operations, after taking Zombie Man Bat and Zombie Bane out for a trial run to try and arrest the crazy Quilt. Apparently, Quilt is just one of many supervillains who are working for a mysterious smuggling ring following their escape from Arkham at the end of A-Day. Now, unlike Task Force X, we discover that Task Force Z runs themselves in a very different fashion. For one, there's a lot of distance kept between the paymasters at the top and the actual people doing the work in the field. There's the creepy Dr. Shelley who tells us everything we need to know about Lazarus resin, basically small bits of the Lazarus pit that keep the zombies alive but also deeply addicted. We originally saw this stuff in the Tim Drake Future State book and actually saw it just again recently in the newest issue of Suicide Squad, so Lazarus resin's the hot new thing. Jason's not exactly getting along with all of his brand new masks Masters, including Crispin, a disembodied voice who seems to run the operation as hands-off as possible, as well as a mysterious woman named Hannah Hobart, who not only doesn't fear the Walking Dead that Jason is forced to work with right now, but actually gets quite incensed at the notion of calling the monster, saying that if anyone should be sympathetic, it's Jason, considering his history, lots of people have considered him a monster once or twice, but hasn't he always strived to be better, and isn't that something that should make him the ideal leader of this team. Also, if you're a fan of horror and naming gags, then you probably already got this. Dr. Shelley, Mary Shelley, Crispin, Crispin Glover, Hobart, Doug Hobart. In fact, this whole Task Force Z operation is actually officially known as Project Halpern, as in Dr. Death, the old Batman villain. Red Hood continues to butt heads with Dr. Shelley when she decides that the best way to get Crazy Quilt to talk is to release Astrid Arkham, the Arkham Knight to scare him. I guess Arkham Knight was one of the people who died during A-Day even though we didn't exactly get to see her death like we did the others. While Jason greatly disagrees with these tactics, unfortunately there's very little he can do right about now, and these methods do prove to actually be effective as Crazy Quilt spills the beans. Apparently there's a warehouse out there where the smuggling operation he was forced to work for is keeping a bunch of their stuff right now, and because of that, Red Hood and his team are dispatched once again. It's here, too, we meet the final member of Task Force Z, Mr. Bloom, who is quick to say that he's not actually dead. Well, not dead in the same way all the other zombies are dead. It's been so long, I can't blame anyone for forgetting what Mr. Bloom's actual origin was. Turns out this warehouse is actually under the protection of Mr. Freeze. Which, if you're anything like me, you're probably saying, wait, didn't his wife put him in the deep freeze? Wasn't he off the table, and then didn't they kill his wife? Yep, none of that's brought up here, though. Now, what was so important that Task Force Z was willing to send all of their zombie strike force after it and Mr. Freeze is willing to die to protect? Well, it turns out these smugglers are actually dealing in, yeah, you guessed it, more Lazarus resin. Oh geez, you mean to tell me this extra governmental organization that shanghais people into servitude and weaponizes the dead may not exactly be on the level heaven forfend? Jason and his team does battle with Freeze and his goons and needless to say, it does not go well. Well, the zombies don't fight like a team, they don't take directions, and Jason basically has to step on in and do all the hard work himself. Also, notice that Red Hood's trademark weapon now is not one but two crowbars? The one time actually bringing a gun to a fight would be acceptable when dealing with zombies and Jason doesn't do it. Man, no wonder he's the black sheep of the Bat family. Jason's zombie partners start dropping like flies all over the place, though they're probably not really dead, only just undead. Red Hood manages to 
to take Mr. Freeze down, but unfortunately does too much damage to his cryo suit, which ends up exploding and caking the entire warehouse in snow and ice. This means that poor Red Hood is hopelessly stuck and at the mercy of his own very hungry teammate, the Arkham Knight, as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Task Force Z issue number one, everybody, and overall I thought it was pretty alright. It certainly benefits from coming out this close to Halloween, that's for sure. I also get the distinct feeling if you didn't read those Detective Comics backups, then you're going to be a little lost jumping right on in as the book doesn't try and get you up to speed that quick. Also, if you are a fan of Jason Todd or Red Hood, then this is pretty much your only choice right now, and Lord knows you could definitely do a lot worse. I appreciate Rosenberg treating Jason as the one sane man in a very insane situation, and even though he may be a morally dubious anti-hero in years past, here he's positively a Boy Scout when compared to everyone else. They also really do a good job drawing a line in the sand and saying that these are the science type of zombies and not the magical type of zombies. Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. It didn't blow my mind or change my life, but I certainly enjoyed it enough to pick up the next issue, and you might very well as well. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.